Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, the bodacious redhead, <laughs> also known as Fat Cat, up in these parts. Yeah. Here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter in law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. Razor Blade. Razor Blade. Wow. <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> we are here to talk Sister Wives Rewind. We are in season five and we're going to be getting into episode three. We are going to be meeting the Dargers. Yes. And I got some feelings about that girl I've same got some psychic or fake psychic perceptions same. that i want to share with you but before we get to that we do have to issue a disclaimer please hide your wife and hide your kids this is a politically incorrect podcast we say bad words uh -huh. we have stupid opinions oh, yeah. especially beatrice 100%. and so if you're so You might want to find yourself another dumpster, baby. But if you're down to party and get into the asses of some Mormons, <laughs> yes. welcome to this dumpster. Yeah, and if you are down re and ready to party, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe. And join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash reality TV Cringe. That's where the real party's at. Okay. And if you are watching on YouTube, please uh like comment share, share and subscribe yeah. every little thing you do really does help us in the algorithm honey i think we're close to 3500 subscribers oh on youtube God, it's taken we so are making long. this slow climb to 4000 do you remember prices right they had that ski one i feel like that's we're endlessly that's on this mountain trying to get the yeah. top toward 4000 subscribers God, so please. hit that subscribe button and make sure to share just hit share and then copy that link just and copy honey it. you're helping us yeah and so thank you in advance. Thank you. All right, before we get into this episode, I understand that somebody, a loyal raccoon, yeah. called us on the speak pipe yes. and left us a message. Now, by the way, if you want to call us and give us your opinion about the Browns or the Plaths or us. any of these people on reality TV, even Vanderpump. Yeah. There's still things going on with them Vanderpump people. Oh my people. god, so stupid. All you have to do is go to speakpipe.com slash reality TV cringe. You have 90 full fucking seconds. My god. To pop off. Yeah. We might play you on the pod. We probably will. We probably will. Yeah. And so um, we'd love to hear from you. So if you want to call us, please do. Thank y'all. It's free and you can be anonymous if you totally wish. Free. Uh, totally free. We're not charging you people. No. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. All right. Who called? Uh, we have a lovely caller named Amanda, hey, Amanda, and she's got some question about sister wives. Sister wife? Hey guys, this is Amanda from Oklahoma. I've been an OG raccoon since day one, and I wanted to talk to you guys really quick about the Sister Wives book that I've been reading. I know it's super old and it was written a long time ago, but it is an absolute trip. I really, really encourage you guys to read it, especially as the OG Sister Wives fans that you are and that I am, I think anybody who is obsessed with their show needs to read it because it's an absolute dumpster fire and there are so many things in it that conflict with what we've heard on the show and I just think it's really super interesting and I read the whole thing in about three days time. So anyway, long story short, that's what I wanted to say. Mm. Love you guys and enjoy listening to you. Well, Do they have that um, that they're uh, legalized marijuana in Oklahoma? I think so. <laughs> she sounds like she's vaping, honey. Probably. She's like lying I in wish. her bed. She's vaping. She's, she's chilling. Like, she's calling some raccoons. <laughs> um, Amanda, yeah, we have the book right here. We are in possession of it. We have not read it separately or together. No, she's too busy reading smut. I mean, I'm so many books. <laughs> Literally, I'm up to 110 books this year. And they're all smut? All of it's God. All of it's God. But I do want to read that. And we yeah. are thinking about doing that on Patreon. For Patreon. I don't know how we would do it on Patreon. Will we just read a chapter, read a chapter. separately and then discuss it kind yeah. of a thing? Yeah. Maybe we'll do that. We've got some other things we are covering on Patreon right now. For example, couples therapy. Which is lit. I don't know if you hoes are watching that on Paramount oh Plus God, that is so or good. Showtime. But Dr. So Orna good. is our girl. Oh, and we, we get her. so deep into the psychological workings yes. of these various New Yorkers. It's so good. Um, and I also want to cover Forbidden Love. I do too, because I 
Are heard you? it's lit. I yes. Wanna, I want to cover that. Let's do it. We got to get through couples therapy and yep. then get on that shit. But we're going to cover that on Patreon. And if we ever get into this book, which I really do want to. We do want to. Amanda, so thank you for the kick in the ass. Thank you. We're going to do it on Patreon. Yeah. All right. Let's get into Sister Wives, Season 5, Episode 3, entitled More Sister Wives. Okay. <laughs> we got even more. Even more, okay. a.k.a. the Dargers. Yeah. But first, we st- start with a discussion between Cody and the wives about oh, yeah. their homes. Their options. Their options. And it's kind of interesting hearing him go between wife to wife and discuss what they actually want christine wants five bedrooms for sure because she's got one million children yep janelle doesn't think her kids need their own bedrooms she thinks that they can all share their bedrooms so she doesn't want the fifth does she not want the fifth or does she not want the fourth because she's talking about taking a bedroom away and Uh i'm like are you like asking for a three bedroom i don't know i think she's trying to go lower so she can save money because she's talking about the budget she's like well like i know we all have our own set budgets but like i don't need all the extra space so the money that she doesn't use does she get to put that into her bank account or something i don't know i'm just wondering how it works honey but do go on and then robin of course needs to have a hobby room just like Mary, and she also wants a room for an office. Right. For herself. For her, my sister wife's closet, she's very busy. Sure. That's but, why she has a nanny, Tara Lise. Of course. But we know that that office turns into Cody's office. Yes. A.K.A. their fuck room. The reason that he spends so much time there is mm-hmm. because she has an office and she can accommodate me. That's why I don't spend any nights with my other wives. Yeah, exactly. And then we have Mary just saying she wants... Just the wet bar. I'm fine with that. But also maybe a tennis court. Which she's just being facetious about the tennis court. But like this is an $8,000 wet bar. This is not a big so deal, stupid. Mary. I do not understand. It's and I'm ugly. never going to understand. Ever. It's ugly. Why you are pitching for this wet bar unless it's because the only reason you can get it is if you have a fifth bedroom. Like is this really about having the biggest house? Maybe it is. Maybe it is. The status. Is it really about the wet bar? It's the status of being the first wife and having the biggest house. I guess. But you're in a loveless marriage and your husband melted down your ring. So yeah. I mean. But we don't have to talk about that. Who's really winning here? That's not here? germane. Yeah. And then we have a discussion about their polygamous vacation with the Darkers. Yes. I guess they've known them in years past. Like for four years. Although Christine's aunt, the one who left the cult and then spoke out against fundamentalist Mm -hmm. Mormonism and who changed her name. It was Sylvia. And then it became Kristen. She was married to Joe Darger's, I think, uncle who passed away. So there's a connection between Christine and Joe. Christine's known him for longer, I think. But as a family, I think the Browns have maybe known the Dargers for about four years. Okay. But they're not like super close because they don't hang out with him all the time. But the Dargers are kind of interesting because he's got three wives. He married two of them on the same exact day. Yet one of them claims to be the first wife. Right. I think she must mean the legal wife. The one that he put down in the documents. Weird. But I mean, why? If you got married at the same exact time on the same day, why is there a first wife and a second wife? But whatever. Uh, Could not be me. And then 10 years later, he marries his second wife's twin sister. She comes over one day and something just changed. Like it was the vibe. Joe walked in and their eyes met and something shifted in the relationship Uh and the way they tell this story is like that day like she's talking about her marriage which is dysfunctional and what she has left and that day he's like i love you i feel like we've been together for a thousand years on multiple mormon planets i'm gonna marry you and take care of you yeah and that's what happened they kissed and boom it was done fucking weird so joe darker I'm just going to have to make a lot of claims about him He's that a creep. I cannot back up because I don't know this person. This is all fake raccoon psychic vibes. Mm-hmm. But like there's something that's very dark about this person. He certainly comes off as authoritarian uh-huh. with his family. What I think TLC and the Browns are trying to paint as hyper organized and like keeping his family together like smacks of to me like tinges of abuse maybe like that's the kind of guy like toxic masculinity behind closed Mm -hmm. doors i'm not saying that that's who he is but he just seems like he rules in a very militaristic way with an iron fist like when we get to the part where his kids are talking about their family life i'm like "Mm, that's abuse coded yeah like there's something about this guy 
I do not like. I don't know why we're platforming him on our televisions, but we are. So let's get into it. I mean, we platform him for the same reason why we platform Cody. Yeah. Because it's great television. Yeah. Because it's super crazy. You know what was interesting to me is that they're not in the same religion, which yeah. I guess would be the AUB. They're not fundamentalists. The they're independent polygamists. What does that mean? I don't know. Like the people on Seeking Sister Wife where they're just doing it because they believe in the relationship structure. It's not a religious thing. Yeah, but Joe Darger says on the couch that this is an eternal relationship. Mm-hmm. They do speak of their faith. So it sounds speak like God, there's yeah. some strain of Mormon. I don't know which strain it is. COVID-19. COVID-19. <laughs> I don't know what strain it is, but he seems Mormon, but just a different kind, I guess. Yeah, a different brand. It's interesting that he's willing to be open, too, because this is the time where it's still a bit taboo. And they live in Utah. So, I mean, if Cody was afraid of the law in Utah, it doesn't seem like Joe Darker is. He don't no. give no fucks. No. And they all live in one house. But whatever, I digress. We do see the Dargers in Utah as they're like getting ready for their vacation to go hang out with the Browns and they're like super organized. They've got all their shit together. They have a million fucking kids. The adults act like adults and it's not chaotic. Shocking. There's lists. There's organization. We know who's going in which van, who gets in the truck. All the kids just do what they're supposed to be doing and it seems to be like a seamless excursion. Yeah, a bit. The Browns. The Browns are just a fucking mess. And then we kind of get into like some of their history of like how they met. And it's really kind of really fucking weird. Like how he married these two girls on the same day. He asked for their parents permission. And one of them was not approving. So let's break this down. We've got Alina, who is the first wife. Mm -hmm. And then we have Vicky, who is the second wife. Now he goes to Vicky's parents asks for her hand in a plural marriage and her parents are okay with it goes to alina's father asks for alina's hand in a plural marriage and that guy's like absolutely not like what are you trying to do weirdo just stick your dick in all these women absolutely not but then it sounds like two or two and a half years pass and at some point that dad comes back around and says look I'll give you my permission, but not my blessing. Mm -hmm. And so then they get married. So do you mean to say that for two to two and a half years, all three of them were dating? Were they living together? Were they, uh, did they go in the temple? Did they, I don't know. It seems messy. I'm curious. Yeah, I'm very curious. And then after they get married on the same day, 10 years later, Valerie, who's Vicky's twin sister, comes into the picture. She comes from a polygamist family, right? She says that was pretty dysfunctional so she left that husband took her kids and then met joe darger and fell in love because they a were soulmates years across multiple mormon planets oh, is this a smut that you would like to read indeed <laughs> i would i would like that <laughs> be quite great yes there is something in romance uh, books called reverse harem which is where you have one heroine or one female character and then multiple males oh wow And it's sort of the reverse harem concept. Those are quite fun, too. Really? So it's like Mormonism, but backwards. Oh. Yeah. Polyandry. That's correct. (laughs) Like it. I like it. Well, then they get married and everybody lives happily ever after. And then we have Cody on the couch kind of commenting about the Darger's relationship. And he equates Valerie to Robin Hmm. like that Valerie came into the Darger's family with all these kids and they had a blended family dynamic just like Robin and all of her kids and then he says something kind of interesting where he says that because Valerie came in with her kids and everything he had to be the hero in Valerie's eyes but he's saying that in reference to like how he is with Robin Mm, I didn't even think about that I thought that was interesting and I wonder if that's like Robin's telling him that like oh my god you're my hero oh I love you so much like she's propping him up so much and like Putting him on this pedestal of like the king of masculinity. So amazing. You saved us from poverty and an abusive ex. And I do think she's also telling her children that as well. Because at some point in the upcoming seasons, they like start to call him Preston and not dad. And now Cody's dad. And so that's kind of the thing I think Robin does. But I didn't even make that connection in the moment. And I wonder if he was saying that as a dig to the three OG wives. Because they're all kind of critical of him. 
I mean, yeah. especially Christine. Yeah, I mean, as they're packing to go to Oceanside, California, oh, girl, um, Oceanside, <laughs> California, like Joe Darger's got his lists mm-hmm. out. All the kids are stacking their luggage in the vans. It's perfectly organized. Mary loves it. Janelle's just like, I mean, let's just calm down a little bit. Yeah. But Christine does go to great lengths and says that she actually really likes the way Joe Darker deals with his family leads and his that family. leads his family and she doesn't think that he's controlling like some other people might say it's just that his children clearly fully respect him <laughs> they pan over on the couch honey to Cody and Cody's just like so the implication of course is that Cody's own children don't necessarily respect him fully mm-hmm. which when we get out to the scene at the diner with all the kids we kind of get a validation of that. Oh, for sure. And then even with Mary's like criticisms of Cody being like, oh, I'm not saying that you're disorganized, but it would be nice if you could be like Joe Darker, who's a real man and leads his family. Like that's the implication. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of liked that these wives are totally digging on him on the couch. But you know that Robin with her big ass jaw is talking to <laughs> is talking to Cody at home while they're fucking while she's pegging him and she's like see how the other wives talk about you you're my hero I would never talk bad about you you're all man you're I'm my all man man honey yeah. yeah oh yeah just puffing him up and meanwhile on the couch they're all all the other ones are dogging him except Janelle but yes Janelle's probably thinking it oh and Janelle's biting her tongue because she holds the purse strings yeah. so yeah. <laughs> she can't really say anything And so then when they're in Oceanside, California, after this whole like chaos of getting the Browns all together and Cody's like, whoa, you guys are all organized. You got everything packed. Yeah, because we're real adults and we have a giant fucking family. This is what you do when you have a million kids. Cody. They kind of go, where do they go? They go to the beach or something? Yeah, they have like a couple of rental houses that are on the beach in Oceanside, California. They pull in. It doesn't look that great from the outside. Kind of booty. From the backside. But they get everybody in. And as soon as they're in the two homes, here goes Joe. He's pulling out his day planner, Mm -hmm. honey. And he's like assigning rooms to everybody. And so he's super organized and he gets it done within a couple of minutes, which just wows the brown wives. Like, oh, my God. We assigned rooms in like two minutes (laughs) i'm is it what and then cody kind of like sidles up to the kitchen island and he's like why don't we figure out who which kitchen we're going to be cooking out of and mary just shuts him down immediately she's like no like why don't we figure out the bedrooms it's the most important thing so we've got joe over here taking control of everything and Mm -hmm. all the wives just like following along and then real man cody trying to do that and his own wives are just like absolutely not loser and then on the couch cody says something kind of interesting where he's like yeah it's it's interesting to see the dynamic between darker's family and my family because in his family he leads it but in my family they lead it yeah the wives lead it yeah and that makes him mad like he's not saying that in jest and robin says something like well i guess we should just shut up then and then mary's like yeah i won't say anything else you can tell me where to go yikes yeah the patriarchy is starting right now. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and then um, in Oceanside, after they get everything situated in all of their rooms, they go lakeboarding mm-hmm. on the beach with a million kids. Right. And that lifeguard at the beach is like super pissed because he's like, it was a nice morning until all these fuckers showed up. <laughs> all I knew was we had two families coming. I had no idea that each family had 3,000 children. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know in advance. (laughs) He was not fucking happy and it made me laugh really hard. And then after the wakeboarding and like there's a segment where Robin talks about how the girls, the brown girls were um, checking out some of the darker boys and she's like, oh my God, maybe they can get married. I'm like, ew, cringe. And Christine says that she wouldn't mind if some of their kids dated the darker kids. And yikes. I think Christine talks about how they're fit and they work out. That was the that was the next day when they went boogie boarding. That's right. So they all go boogie boarding and the darker wives put on their swimsuits, which are super modest mm-hmm. slash matronly. They've got little skirts on, but they all work out. They, yep. they all kind of have great bodies mm-hmm. versus 
what's happening over on the brown team <laughs> with the women over there no offense or anything because you know i'm i'm over here sitting in the dumpster just eating the trash yeah. i'm fat we're rolling around but yeah christine is acknowledging in this moment like these women look good they clearly have an exercise regimen and you know i feel a little bit called out because i'm over here just schlumpy and then freaking robin's skinny ass is like yeah. oh yeah well it's funny because i'm the only one that doesn't work out huh She's like, what are you talking about, Christine? You work out every day, I thought you said. I was so it was manipulative. So bad. And she's like, well, yeah, Christine says, yeah, I do work out. But I mean, a lot like that. Look at their bodies. And then Robin says, like, all of these women work out. I'm the only one who doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. Can you believe it? Yeah. So skinny. I don't have to work out on, like, these hoes. <laughs> like these heifers <laughs> seriously yeah. the fat shaming on this show is wild yeah. like the subtle shit that robin says is crazy but after the first day where they were at the beach and they go wakeboarding and they talk the adults kind of talk about going public yeah and this is cody's opportunity to show that he's like such a good guy right because grandstand he's looking out for other polygamists from the gangster polygamists is what he was right he wants about. to show the world a version of polygamy uh, that isn't like child brides and people abusing the welfare system mm -hmm. like there's a lot of good polygamous folks out there that he wants to represent by going public and i was just thinking to myself but didn't you abuse the welfare system haven't christine and janelle declared bankruptcy Hello. haven't you been rolling debts from one wife to another well, i don't know for sure i certainly haven't seen the documents but the rumors are mm -hmm. that they participated in some of that fraud early on in their relationships but i don't know yeah far but be it please from me. tell me how you did this out of the kindness and goodness of your heart not because you wanted to go on tv because you were broke and needed to make money and, and you're just basically a narcissist and you want to be a star on TLC. Hello. Yeah. And then later, after I think boogie boarding, then they also have a conversation about affection, like giving affection to the wives. And Joe Darger has this philosophy that he's like, I'm going to kiss and fuck any wife I want at any time. All the time. I'm right. always going to be affectionate in front of all my wives. So that way we don't have any kind of jealousy and everybody understands the expectation. Contrast that to Cody, who will only show affection on his given night with the wife. Yes, and not in front of the other wives. To avoid jealousy. Right. I guess. Which I thought was interesting because Darger and his wives are just like, yeah, that was something that was difficult. It's something that I have to relearn how to do from time to time, mm -hmm. like to accept that my husband is giving affection to someone else. But like as soon as you get over that block, then you realize that this is just all of our relationships and this is how you know, we move forward and yeah. it gets a lot easier versus the Browns. You know, they they only allow Cody to show affection in a certain way and behind closed doors. They never share that part with the other person so that they never even have to feel jealousy. And Mary says something interesting on the couch. She's like, there's enough going on in our family for us to have jealousy over. Like, we don't need to add on top of that, Cody, you know, French kissing Robin <laughs> or Janelle, like for me right. to feel that in addition to all the other things. And I'm like, huh interesting what sort of jealousy are you talking about i think she's calling janelle out For about the, the money mm -hmm. and about the wet bar and yep. the jealousy that christine and janelle might be feeling because mary has expensive teas oh 100 percent. that's what she's referencing and i just think it's interesting that they came up with that idea that like they can't show affection because it would cause this jealousy and i'm like well that's because cody is showing it inequally like he's not He's never, I don't think he's ever been fair with it. And then I wonder, you know, fast forward to now, like when did the wives start divulging to each other that they were having problems? Because at some point they all understand that they were not getting anything from Cody, that it was just Robin. So when did they start sharing that with mm -hmm. each other? That's what I want to know. Yeah, I don't know. And then after that, the... All the kids, the brown kids, the darker kids go out to dinner and they talk shit about their parents, which yeah. I love to see. Yes. And we learn that, you know, Maddie plus Logan, they're both confirming that it's terribly chaotic, definitely unorganized. I think Logan, with regard to Cody, says something like, you know, my dad thinks he's knowledgeable about absolutely everything, <laughs> but he's not. Love it. Which I thought was pretty great. So good. And then the darker kids are like, yeah, our dad knows everything. He's a walking encyclopedia and like we would never dare to 
talk back to him kind yes. of thing. And um, Logan also says in terms of like who handles different things in the house or in the family, Logan says, well, whichever wife or whichever family member has the knowledge or expertise in that area typically is in charge of administering that thing. And then the Dargers say, well, yeah, our dad does all the things because he has all of the knowledge and expertise. Yeah. And there were a couple of digs in there. I think um, Valerie's son, who was born of another of her previous relationship, Mm -hmm. says that Joe Darger is big, bald and intimidating. Yeah. Which is kind of funny. Yeah. A way to describe him. But also, but mm. he's also saying that Yikes. on camera, they're also saying that it's his way or the highway. Mm-hmm. So they're painting Joe Darger as, again, this authoritarian kind of hard ass person. Yeah. I'm just like, yikes. I mean, he does give off that vibe, though. Yes. I mean, he gives off like a very hard, mean energy and like nobody talks back to their dad it seems like everybody just kind of toes in line yeah they're probably af- afraid of him mm-hmm. um i went and looked up to see if they're still together because i was very curious yeah and it appears that they are oh. and also i don't know if you know in 2022 joe darger actually spoke out about the dissolution of all of these marriages with cody brown amazing and he attributed to the breakdown of those marriages to cody's ego love it he's right he's he's definitely right and talking about how polygamy will amplify your weaknesses Mm. and so if you then become a polygamist that's just going to get louder bolder bigger and that is what happened with cody and his weakness was his ego of course i'm (sighs) paraphrasing and adding a little bit but that's what he said which i found to be interesting that's super based actually like for all that we think of joe darger i'm like yes call him out Mm -hmm. and it would be like another polygamous man to be like yeah cody you fucked up yeah like and i feel like if cody i mean cody definitely knows that he said that about him that totally shattered him yes because you know he's into his bros oh yeah into the brotherhood into his dudes Mm yeah because he's hiding his homosexuality right yeah and here's um joe darger still successful still a polygamist still keeping all of his wives and his children together his family is intact unlike cody who has turned into a shell of who he used to be yes oh my god (laughs) sidebar Mm. (laughs) did you see the recent cameo that he did with his freaking hair yeah that you put it up on the instagram i I saw it on our own instagram yes (laughs) it was so bad oh my god it okay let's put a picture right here okay because okay. we just have to share it like this he did a cameo for somebody and he showed up on camera and then willfully shared this video with somebody like he intentionally did this like this is what his hair looked like it's horrible dude robin are you doing this on purpose to him oh my like, god she probably is cody can you not see yourself in the mirror just shave your head uh, and be big bald and intimidating it like is joe darker really preposterous it's it horrible. is really a ridiculous look cody it's just as bad as it can be but that's what he gets though honestly. that's you do deserve it it's you totally... deserve to look like a clown out here on you the do. internet because you are a clown yes oh god and then after the kids go to dinner then the adults go to dinner yeah which was very interesting in my opinion. This is where we get into the good stuff, honey. Yes, because the Dargers are not afraid to ask the hard questions. They straight up ask the Browns how they're doing living separately and living in such far away homes from each other. And Christine's like, oh, it sucks. We're not a family. And all the wives basically say that. Robin kind of is quiet, though. She's pretty quiet. But Christine also says that there was a time when they were all living together, but Robin wasn't integrated into into their family yet. Mm-hmm. And so then they onboarded Robin and they needed to do a reset anyway. So Las Vegas made sense for them. They needed to figure out a situation where they could all be together in one way or another yeah and cody talks about how they initially wanted one big huge home but they couldn't find a big home like, that had more than five bedrooms we have to talk about this because he's so like, we were expect these people moving out of a split level in lehigh with right. a history of bankruptcy and he don't have a job yeah he says he was expecting to move to las vegas and find some home on a short sale somebody who had to go bankrupt <laughs> in 2008 when the auction. housing market went upside down like find a 15,000 square foot home with 25 bedrooms and four kitchens. Like that was their expectation that a house like that existed. And I'm like, are you guys 
smoking meth yes are you guys delusional that yes. house doesn't exist no not even for millionaires billionaires no, like it's like wants four t- kitchens yeah it's so dumb but that's just shows just how naive dumb. they are they are so stupid they are so stupid and then the darkers ask if they ever have to reset again they make a suggestion actually you guys should share a kitchen it yeah. actually would really work really well for your family. You guys would be more cohesive. It's better for the kids. And all of the wives are like, no, it'll never work. Cody's like, I've done that before. And I have two wives that actually think sharing a kitchen is abusive. And then we have Mary crying about this on the couch. Yep. And she's basically saying that when Cody says this at the table, she takes this real personal because she knows Cody is referring to her relationship with Janelle. And based on kind of the tidbits that Mary shares, because of course she's never super direct no. and forthright, like you got to suss out what she's trying to say. But she's basically saying that when they were all first together, just the three of them, Mary, Janelle and Cody, Janelle and Mary had to share a kitchen and Mary had her ideas about where the cups go. Mary had her idea about how the laundry was folded and she was just accustomed based on how she grew up in her family to be able to say what it is she thought was right and Mm -hmm. good. And Janelle conversely like didn't have her voice and didn't know how to represent herself. And Janelle says something interesting here on the couch in which she said, you know, we were young. It was when we were first together. It was a bunch of personality differences and Cody just didn't realize that he needed to be listening for me. Yeah. Did you hear that? I did hear that. So Cody either wasn't paying attention or was willfully not showing up as an advocate for Janelle Mm -hmm. while Mary just railroaded her it just sounds like cody let them fight like Mm -hmm. didn't try to take charge of it and be like look like this is the dynamic you guys have to learn how to get to get along and like mary you need to chill the fuck out because i don't buy that mary was just speaking her mind and saying her opinions i'm sure she was hella condescending Mm -hmm. i'm sure she was fucking rude she was probably bullying and probably bullying i mean it doesn't rise to the level of abuse if you're just being forthright and direct that's right actually healthy communication so it sounds like the way you were expressing yourself was um toxic oh yeah and you were doing it to somebody who didn't was a young girl didn't know how to speak up for herself and you just ran all over her and she still doesn't really know how to speak for herself no. as a full-ass adult it's actually pretty sad like janelle is very quiet in a lot of these older episodes and she just doesn't really speak out Mm -hmm. so that's like partly because of mary but also because janelle just feels like she doesn't really have a place to say anything in the family and then i thought it was interesting how they're talking to the dargers about this and they're like "Uh, we can never do this and mary asks the darger wives like well what do you do if somebody wants to decorate the house differently or if they want to do something different in the kitchen. And the darker wives are like, who cares? Does that really fucking matter? Like what matters is you have all these kids, you have this big family, and that you should compromise for the sake of the family. And I loved that they did that because it's totally a dig to the Browns. Because it just shows how selfish they all are, that they care more about their individual like personal spaces and stuff like that. They hold on to these artificial, superficial things like how they decorate and how they handle their kitchen run their kitchen versus how to be a cohesive loving yeah and how to make sure that all your children grow up as siblings together proximate to one another the darker wives are like that's the most important thing that we are a unified family and that they get to have their brothers and sisters around like that's way more important than whether i put um you know a painting on the wall or not and i do think cody in particular takes offense to this because when Mm. he's on the couch he frames it as the darkers trying to tell us how we should be right you know i would and he's like i would never presume to tell somebody else how to do polygamy like this is just the way that we've figured it out and for us what works is an independent cohesive approach and i think robin calls it the united states of browns yeah where everybody has their own identity they can have their own space their own corner versus the darkers who are literally all together and taking care of one another and free with their affection and their demonstrations of affection versus the browns and so we have to ask ourselves well which polygamist family lasted yeah it's and the darkers it was the darkers it's not the browns and it's like i can understand where the Browns maybe were going with like the wives need to have their independent spaces. Like they need to not be an extension of Cody and the husband and this polygamous dynamic. But 
I think the reason why the Brown wives hold on to that is because they don't really have like the stability within their relationships. Like Cody isn't fucking them. He isn't being equal with all of his time. I think there's so much inequality that that's why the Brown wives like focus on their own spaces because that's like really the only thing that they control. That's my opinion about it though. I think that makes sense. And like if you put yourself in their position and if you're one of those wives and your husband isn't fucking you and he's not spending time with you and he's always with the other wife, like, well, yeah, I'm going, if I'm going to stay, I'm going to have to make a life for myself. Right. I'm going to have to seek out things that fulfill me on a personal level and take care of my children because this fuckhead loser (laughs) isn't around. Exactly. So that's what you would end up inevitably having to do. But like the Dargers are like, that should never be be what it is though like that's just what you're doing because it's not working we're doing this because we're making it work and that's the difference yes i thought that was so good and then the dargers talk about their family mission statement and i'm snoring snoring too and so is janelle because yeah. Janelle thinks that that's stupid. <laughs> she's my she's my sister, my Torian sister. So good. She's like, I don't see the point in writing a family mission statement. But of course, Robin is so gung ho about it. So, so is Christine. Christine and Mary, I guess. Mm-hmm. And they write a mission statement, and it's just like, no, they didn't write it. Aren't well, they going they to do it in a future season? And they oh, put something. it on like some sort of a word art. I don't know. Plaque. I don't care. Uh, yeah, they don't do it right then, but they do agree together that they're going to discuss what their core values are everybody's right, got right. their own values like what are your values christine like figure that out we'll all come together we'll make a mission statement and we're going to bring this family together and this is where cody is saying that up until this point wake up <laughs> up until this point they've kind of been like drinking out of the fire hose right like, he's just been putting out fires nothing's been architected is the word that he uses nothing's been organized like joe darker but like now with the cul-de-sac honey and the homes and the designs like now they're finally architecting their lives going forward and so now is the time yeah therefore for a mission statement unfortunately it's not going to work no it doesn't they don't <laughs> live up to that everything blows up in just a few years time oh, it's so sad to see yeah. but also it's like a car crash like you can't look away <laughs> yeah <laughs> I like watching it. And then we have a preview for the next episode. Yeah, We have the kids, like the older kids, going to volunteer at a charity that helps polygamists who are fleeing abusive situations. And there's some... I'm not going to use this word. There's some like twatty teenage girl, <laughs> but I mean, like she's come out of polygamy. Yeah. Like probably we're going to learn it's a very toxic situation that she's come out of, but she's calling Madison naive and stupid for believing in polygamy. Madison ultimately invites these girls down to Vegas to stay in their home and learn about what real polygamists do and who we are. Uh, which these, I guess, girls end up doing and Mm -hmm. they tell their stories at the table. And then we have this scene in the preview of Christine on the couch crying and saying, I just didn't realize that men could be so bad. Oh my God, whatever. Really? What are you talking about? You grew up in polygamy, bitch. You know that men can be... You are currently married to a man who is bad. Who is horrible. Who doesn't take care of you. Who is absolutely (laughs) ignoring you. Who shortly hereafter is not going to be fucking you anymore. Neglects your children. You are married to a bad person. Like miss me with that, you I big know. toddler baby. She's so like McKelty. I know. She's so like it's McKelty. So annoying. But I'm looking forward to that. Oh, episode. me too. I'm wondering if these polygamist cult abuse kids like if this is a crossover with that show that was on TLC several years ago, lots of years ago, where they're trying to save people in polygamy and oh. they've got like these undercover ex-mormons who go into these hidey holes filled with fundamentalist mormons honey and they're trying to save these girls Ooh. they go in the middle of the night does anybody remember that show i, I don't do. remember it it was a long time I was ago 12. you were 12 <laughs> I, i'm wondering if this is like some sort of a crossover event for sister wives oh my god we shall see bitch. we shall see next week well is there anything else that we want to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get up a- out of here, Beatrice. Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five-star review. It really helps us grow the pod, and so we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. We will be back later this week to talk. Welcome to Plathville and Unexpected, honey. We got to catch up. We've got I know. two full weeks, so we got to talk oh, about God, these young girls sorry. with their babies and everything. Um, so make sure you come back for that. Until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you, kitty cat, and peace 
Bye guys. <laughs>